So here we are installing basic system software and we can start to build the final LFS system. Um, as it says, the installation of software is straightforward, although in many cases the installation instructions can be made shorter and more generic, but we've opted to provide full instructions for every package to minimize possibilities for mistakes. The key to learning what makes a Linux system work is to know what each package is used for and why you or the system may need it. So don't you recommend using customized op optimizations? Um, it explains why and there's some more information there. Um, the SPU values and required disk space include test suite data for all applicable packages and we calculated using minus J for all operations unless specified otherwise. And uh, LFS discourage building and installing static libraries because I think there's potential problems doing that. Package management, if you wish to use package management to um, update individual packages, uh, it's obviously a system you want to keep then, then that's detailed there, but uh, generally I would have thought most people just want to have a go at installing and learn about it. Um, but obviously if you wanted to do package management, that's uh, an advanced thing. So we start with man pages. So there's a few shorter tools and we start to build some of the more basic tools up um, building up to the largest package GCC and then the final um, tools that make up the system. So we're in sources let's extract man pages and a couple of files to remove or a few files to remove First of all, and then they're installed with that instruction. So the next package is probably the smallest, I think. IR ETC. And just copy a couple of files into the etc directory. And that's that one done. And then we move on to glibc. So first we apply a patch for FHS compliant locations for data and runtime uh, sorry programs and runtime data make a build directory change into that build directory create this config palms for the LD config and SLN utilities prepare for configuration And then we build it.
Okay, that's finished compiling. So now we run the tests with make check. This will take a little bit longer. So we'll just wait for that to finish.
Okay, so that has finished testing. All we need to do now is just cross-reference the failures with what's known about and what we can ignore. So we've got one failure and four unexpected passes. Probably ones to take most note of. So let's have a look. So IO test LCHMOD is known to fail in the LFS root environment. So that's that one there. Um, there's some known to fail on timeouts on a relatively slow, slow system. So we haven't got that. And some tests may fail with relatively old CPU. So we haven't got that. So that's why we've only got one failure. Uh, so we've got some unexpected passes, but they're generally not a problem. So that all looks good. So we can carry on with the installation. Touch one file. Uh, fix and make file to skip an outdated sanity check. And it says if upgrade, right, so we're not upgrading, we can skip that. So assuming you are still, uh, well, building an LFS system to upgrade it, um, you'd need to take note of that. Uh, so let's install the package. Okay, that's done. Fix a hard-coded path to the executable loader in the script in the LDD script. So paste that in. Next, install the locales that can make the system respond in a different language. None of these locales are required, but if some of them are missing, the test suites for some packages will skip important test cases. Individual locales can be installed using the local def program. E.g., the second local def command below provides. Uh, combines the CSCZ char set independent locale definition within the UTF-8 char map definition and appends results to the user lib locale local archive. So the following instructions will install the minimum set of locales necessary for optimal coverage. If you do only want to install uh, the locale for your country, uh, you'll need to create this directory first and then either look for your country in this list or adapt one of these lines. For example, if I was just doing uh, ones from my country, I'd use that one because it's the standard ENGB. And I'd also use um, or adapt this one here and change the US to ENGB. So they've got a UTF profile as well, UTF-8 profile as well. But because I'm doing full coverage tests, I'm going to install all of this. I'm going to copy and paste all of this at once. They don't produce any output, as I remember. Um, apart from, oh, it might say it may, may take a while to generate these for each one. But as long as we don't see anything different, then it should be okay to just copy and paste all of these in one go. So it's created that subdirectory. That's okay. Oh, it is actually going ahead and creating them silently. So that's good. As long as we don't see anything when the prompt returns, anything else, then we can take that as being successful. If you want to install every single lo locale, you can run this make command. Um, and there's some instructions here about creating locales that are not listed in the GDC locale supported file um, if you need them. So it gives an example there. So now we need to create the, oh, what's this? GLibc now uses libidn2 when resolving internationalized domain names. This is a runtime dependency. So if you need that capability, you'll need to follow the instructions in the BLFS libidn2 page. So configuring glibc, we'll create this file here. Add some time zone data. Let's copy these in one at a time.
Okay. Um, there is a note there about um, don't, don't change this to your own country. It says here about we use New York because POSIX requires the daylight saving time rules in accordance with US rules. Um, no one needs to determine the time zone that's local to us. So all you do is run this program and select the correct answers. So I'm in Europe, so I'll select seven and I'm in Britain, it's called here. So it's number eight. And it says the following information has been, been given Britain, UK, therefore time zone Europe, London will be used. Is this above information OK? Yes. So now it says you can make this change permanent for yourself and it tells you what to do. So the key thing we need here is this Europe, London, everything between these single quotes. And what you need to do is to copy this uh, line here and substitute the XXX for the output of that script that was just run, or that program that was just run. So I need to copy just everything that's in between these quotes and paste that there and press enter. Configuring the dynamic loader. So this is necessary. And you can add in um, other paths. So you can add in an include directory. So you can add that to that file and actually create that location so that it's ready in case anything uses it, especially in BLFS, I think, their package. I'm not sure about LFS, but um, definitely BLFS. So if we cat etc ld so conf you'll see that additional directory has been added in there. So that's glibc done. Move on to zlib next. So configure it. Build it. Run some checks. All good. Install it and remove a static library. Bzip2 next. So we've got a patch to put in. Right, so this mouse is causing problems again. Let me start again. So I put that patch in and this set command and another one. Prepare it for installation. Uh, compilation, sorry. Now we can build it. Install the programs. Install the shared library. And now install the shared bzip2 binary. and remove a static library that's not required and that's done. XZ next. So configure it. Build it, run some tests, so 
So everything passed, that's good. Oh dear. And install. And that's complete. So Z standard next. So I compile it straight away, there's no configuration. So I make check to test, it says that um, several places indicate fail, but they are expecting only a fail in capitals as an actual test failure. And there should be no test failures. So that looks all good. Install it and remove a static library. So file next. So a straightforward installation. Configure, make, test results. And install it. All good. We want to reline. So we've got a couple of sets to put in to make some modifications for LD config with the looks of it. Or we'll can trigger a link in LD config. Uh, a bug, sorry, linking bug. And then a patch. And we can start the build by configuring it. Compile the package, install it, and got some documentation here to install as well. So now we've got M4. Again, these are just basic. Uh, instructions for configuring, building, checking and installing. So let's build it now. Run some tests. All looks good. There's no failures. Install it. And that's done. Now BC. Prepare for compilation with this command. Build it with the make command and test it. All tests passed so we can install it. And it's done. Flex next. So 
So configure. Build it. And run some tests. So we've got all passes there. Install the package and create a couple of sim links. And that's done. TCL next. So there's two files here. We want to extract the source one. Prepare it for compilation. So we start with this configure. Build it. Okay, it's done. So we've just got three set commands to apply. Oops, what's happened there? And set source there. And we can test results with this command
Okay, so we've got a finish there with zero failed. Uh, there's a few skipped, but that looks all good. So we can install TCL. Change permissions on a particular file. Install some private headers. Make a symbolic link. Rename a man page. And install some documentations too. Okay, so that's TCL done. Move on to expect. Uh, expect needs PTYs to work. Verify PTYs are working properly inside the true environment by performing a simple test. So it says OK. Uh, so that's all right. Otherwise, it tells you here what you might need to do to make sure they're working correctly. So let's start the configure. build the package and run some tests. All good, no failures. Install the package and create a sim link for one of the libraries by the looks of it. Deja new or GNU. So separate build directory is required or recommended. Be very careful with this mouse. So we've got one configure command here. Then a couple of make info commands. And we can test the results. and install the package that looks all good and install some additional documentation package config next it for compilation build it install it and create a couple of sim links for compatibility with the original package config and it's done so bin utils next 
So this is the last time we'll be building in utils now. Create a separate build directory and change to it and configure the build. And build it on timeless, see how long this takes, and wait for it to complete. Right, that was fairly simple, one and a half minutes. So now we're going to run some tests. As it says, do not skip this under any circumstances. This is critical. Uh, being spin utils is part of the core system.
Right, so that's finished. We've got um, 60 expected failures, one unex untested test case, and 28 unsupported tests. Uh, oh, that was for LD. Um, we can find the list of the failures with this command. So let's put that in. And it says the 12th test fail in the gold test suite. So these are all in the gold test suite. Let's find out how many there are. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We can actually confirm that, I should think. If we pipe that through WC, will that work? Yeah, there you go. 12 lines. So that looks like that ties up with that line, that sentence there. So we can just go ahead and install that, being there expected at least by the LFS team and remove some static libraries and that's been utils done so next we've got GMP so rather than installing these into the GCC directory these, these are going to be installed into the system there's a note there about 32-bit systems. Um, if you've got, if you're building 32-bit, but you've got a CPU capable of building 64-bit, you need to run this slightly different, differently. Um, this is default settings of GMP produced libraries optimized for the host processor. So if that's not desired, it gives you some information as to what to do to avoid that. Uh, Being this is just going to remain on this machine, just run the configure as it appears in the book okay it's ready to go it says it's identified the host type so it's optimizing for the rocket lake CPU that's fine let's build this and build some documentation and as it says there these tests are considered critical because again GMP is used by part of the core tool chain so let's just run that and it says it's highly optimized for the processor where it's built occasionally the code that detects the processor misidentifies the system capabilities and there will be errors in the test or applica other applications using GMP libraries with the message legal instruction. In this case, GMP should be reconfigured with the option uh, as before. So we can check that we got 199 tests with this command. Make sure they all passed and we have, so that's fine. So we can now install the package and the documentation. And that's GMP done. MPFR. So first thing we've got is a configure command. We'll build this and make some more documentation and now we're going to run some tests again it's critical this is all uh, what GCC relies on these these few packages so it's essential that we are confident that they're built correctly and we've got 198 passes as expected in the book, it ties up with the total tests, so that's good. Let's now run install and install the documentation. That's MPFR done. So now we can move on to MPC. Start with the configure again. Uh, 
build the package, build the documentation, and test the results of the build. Okay, we've got 74 passes of 74 tests, so that's okay. Run the install and install the documentation as well. Next, we've got ATTR. So let's extract that. Configure the package. It says these tests must be run on a file system that supports extended attributes such as X2, 3 or 4. So we've got an XT4 system, so that's fine. We'll have no problems with that. Let's now run the tests. Two out of two passes. So let's install it and that's done. ACL next. So configure the package. And build the package. Now it says ACL test must be run on a file system that supports access controls, but not until core utils package has been built using the ACL libraries. So if desired, return to this package and run make check after the core util packages have been built. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to install this now so we've got ACL because we obviously need it. And then after core utils has been built, I'll come back and um, right, we'll have to rebuild ACL by the looks of it because it says core utils needs to be rebuilt using the ACL libraries. Okay, so we'll have to remove this for now, rebuild it and reinstall it once we've done those tests. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to just click next for the next package. I'm going to center click it to open it in a new tab. And that remind me that I've got ACL there to come back to when um, I reach core utils. So now let's extract libcap. Put this set command in. Compile the package. Run some tests. And it looks okay. You can see pass, there's no failures or errors. And install the package and that's done. So libxcrypt next. So this is a new package and I believe from what I've seen in Gen 2, which is my normal distribution I use, um, that this is something to do with glibc. Yeah, it's mentioned there in fact. Okay, that's done. Let's now build it and run some tests. So we've got 32 passes, 11 have been skipped. So let's now install the package. So the instructions above disabled obsolete API functions since no package installed by compiling from sources would link against them at runtime. However, the only known binary only applications that link against these functions require ABI version 1. If you must have such functions because of that, or to be compliant with LSB, build a package again with the following commands. So uh, it seems it's not absolutely necessary unless you know you need that. So I don't know that I need that. So I'm not going to do anything else. Just tidy up and move on to Shadow.
So you can enforce the use of strong passwords by installing this package, which is in BLFS and then adding this switch. But for now, I'm just building Linux from scratch. Um, I believe BLFS will take you through rebuilding Shadow with that uh, feature. So it's not absolutely necessary here. So we've got to disable some installation of the groups program and man pages because Core Utils provides better versions. So let's put that in. Instead of using the default crypt method, use the much more secure yes crypt method of password encryption, which also allows passwords longer than eight characters. It is also necessary to change the obsolete vast spool mail location for user mailboxes. That shadow uses by default is the var mail location used currently. And remove bin and sbin from the passing, so simply simple links to the counterparts in user. So if you wish to include bin or sbin in the path for some reason, modify path and bash rc after LFS has been built. If you chose to build shadow with crackling support, issue this command, so we haven't done that. So prepare shadow for compilation. So do a touch and configure the package. Now we compile it. And install the package. And the man pages. So configuration of shadow, we convert the passwords and groups to enable the shadowing of those. Uh, default configuration for the user ID utility needs some explanation. First default action for the user ID utility is to create the user and group the same name as user. Uh, by default, this, these numbers begin at 1000. That means if you don't pass extra parameters to user add, each user will be a member of a unique group on the system. So if this behavior is undesirable, you need to pass either G or N parameter to user add. Second, to change the default parameters, the ETC default user ad must be created and tailored to suit your needs. So let's put these two commands in. Make that default directory and change the default group ID to 1000. This parameter causes user ad to create a mailbox file for each new user. So generally, um, it's probably not used. Uh, unless you know you want to use that. So I'm going to add this in because I'd rather not create these files. So I'll just put that in to stop them being created. And now I'm going to set a root password. So this is the password for the root of the new system that we're building. Obviously, the first time we boot it, we'll need to log in as root. And that's been done. So that's shadow complete.